Welcome back to State of the Union. It's the final stretch for the Republican candidates battling it out ahead of Tuesday's primaries. The most high profile, the rough and tumble Ohio Senate race, which will test the power of a Trump endorsement more than a year after he left office. But it's not smooth sailing for Democrats either as they try to sharpen their midterm message amid some troubling economic signs. Here to discuss is Republican <laughs> Governor Asa Hutchinson of Arkansas. Thank you so much for joining me, sir. So inflation is at a 40 year high. And the U.S. economy actually shrank over the first three months of 2022. But there are some positive signs, like the labor market is strong. President Biden says he is not worried about a recession. Are you? Uh, I am. I think that uh, anybody that looks at where we are and the fact that uh, we didn't have any economic growth uh, this last quarter has to be concerned about that. Uh, whenever you've had sustained growth for uh, so many years uh, consistently, uh, you know that you've got to be prepared in the event that comes. And I think uh, there is a possibility of that down the road. Uh, whenever you have high inflationary pressures, whenever you have uh, interest rates going up to slow the economy down, uh, these are stressors on it. You add that to the uh, supply chain woes that we have uh, we've got challenges, and so uh, this administration needs to address those, and they need to do it quickly. You mentioned supply chain woes. A lot of uh, econ many economists say that the drop in the GDP was due to temporary factors like the supply chain disruptions, uh, a, a big trade deficit due to those supply chain issues, uh, and they point to high consumer spending, business investment as signs that the underlying economy is strong. Well, here in Arkansas, we have a strong underlying economy in the sense that uh, we are uh, creating jobs. Uh, we have uh, surpluses in our budget. Uh, we have a $1 billion surplus right now. And, but we also know that underlying that are consumers that are hurting. And so while the state budget is doing well, uh, you've got uh, families that are struggling with gas prices, with energy costs. And so we're looking at returning uh, th that money back to the taxpayers so that they can have some relief. Uh, but that's one solution that uh, what we worry about is not just the next three months, but the next year. And uh, whenever you're seeing uh, uh, flailing or struggling uh, stock market prices, that impacts families as well. Uh, we hope that uh, we can strengthen this economy by more job creation, but also controlling federal spending. There's a lot of signals that are just bad, such as canceling student debt. Mm. These are irresponsible actions that are being uh, put out by the administration in election year, but it doesn't help us to provide confidence in the direction that we're going. You mentioned student debt. Don't you think canceling student debt would be helpful to the residents in Arkansas who are having trouble making ends meet out in the world because they have to pay so much in student loan debt? Well, sure, it'd be helpful to them. It'd be helpful to cancel uh, rent for them. It'd be helpful to pay all their utility bills. It'd be helpful to help on mortgage payments. But uh, the question is, you know, what is the right solution? And again, we're looking at uh, not providing more relief, but trying to return more of what we're collecting in terms of taxes back to uh, the taxpayers. That will help them, and it's a, a more long-term solution as well. And so you cannot have the federal government intervening in all of these areas in terms of giveaway programs. You've got to have a better solid economic plan and that's what uh, we're missing right now. I want to turn to some issues in your party right now. Leaked audio shows Republican House leader Kevin McCarthy saying then President Trump bore responsibility for January 6 and that he should resign in public. As you know, he's lied about that and about what he has fully embraced, which is now Donald Trump. You served two terms in Congress. Would you feel comfortable with Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House if Republicans take control in November? Well, uh, of course, uh, you know, Speaker McCarthy, or excuse me, uh, uh, Majority Leader McCarthy uh, has his own set of challenges within uh, the caucus. 
and uh, he's got to be able to somehow bring that together if we're going to, if he's going to get uh, elected uh, to speaker if we win the majority. If you were uh, still there, would you vote for him? Will. For speaker? I, I'm not going to comment on that because it all depends upon who the alternative is. But I would say that uh, we had one message after January 6th among many of our leaders recognizing the problem with the insurrection. Uh, and that tone has changed, and I believe that that's an error. I don't think we can diminish what happened on January 6th. We're going to be having hearings there in, uh, in Congress that's going to be uh, coming out, a uh, bunch of this public in, in June, and that's not going to be helpful for those that diminished uh, the significance of that event. And so uh, that worries me in terms of not just uh, uh, the majority leader, but also worries me in terms of other leaders that have diminished what happened on January 6th. Your fellow Republican Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida signed a law effectively punishing Disney for its criticism of legislation, restricting how sexual orientation and gender identity are taught in schools. Do you support DeSantis's move against Disney? Well, first of all, Disney has handled this very poorly. Uh, secondly, the law that was passed is, to me, common sense that in those grades, those lower grades, you shouldn't be uh, teaching uh, sexual orientation and those uh, matters that should uh, not be covered in, at that age. But I don't believe that government should be punitive against private businesses because we disagree with them. Uh, that's not the right approach either. And so, to me, that's the old Republican principle of having a restrained government. Uh, and so let's do the, the right thing. It's a fair debate about these special tax privileges. I understand that debate. But let's not go after businesses and punish them because we disagree with what they said. So DeSantis overstepped. Well, I disagree with it. I, I disagree yeah. with a punitive approach to businesses. Uh, businesses make mistakes. They shouldn't have done there, but we should not be punishing them for their private actions. Before I let you go, you previously told me you were keeping your options open as your term as governor ends, options potentially being 2024. You spoke at the Politics and Eggs event in New Hampshire, a traditional stop for any uh, presidential hopeful. Are you seriously considering running for president? Uh, I am, but you've got to get through, uh, of course, uh, this year, but that's an option that's on the table, and that's one of the reasons I was in New Hampshire, and you had Secretary Mayorkas on, and the border security is such an incredible issue. That's what the kind of thing that I'm passionate about whenever uh, you look at we need to have Title 42 or some equivalent to it. Secondly, we've got to go after the cartels in a more vigorous fashion. Uh, and then thirdly, we've got to support the states in, in the role that we play. So there's much to be done there. I care about those issues. And so, yes, I'm going to be engaged this year and hopefully beyond that. Even if President Trump runs, you will run? Consider running. His, his, his uh, candidacy won't affect yours? No, it won't. Uh, I've made it clear I think we ought to have a different direction in the future. And so uh, I'm not aligned in, uh, uh, with him. Uh, on some of his endorsements, but also uh, the direction he wants to take our country. I think he did a lot of good things for our country, but we need to go a different direction. And so that's not a factor in my decision-making process. Governor Asa Hutchinson of Arkansas, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you. Great to be with you today.